Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie. I'm an author and an editor. I have seven books out currently. Don't mind the mess behind me. Um, we haven't made a video in a while, so I thought we would just hang out today. It's a Friday, so I thought I would bring you along for my work day and just kind of catch up and chat. We're gonna start off by getting ready together. That makes it sound like it's gonna be a big thing. I basically put like two things on my face in the mornings these days, but we'll get ready, we'll chat. And yeah, I'll catch you up on what's been going on lately. And we'll, I'll just take you through what my work days have looked like lately. I feel like I just lately so many times. I'm so out of practice with making videos, bear with me. Okay, I'm gonna start off with my perfume this is like a super cheesy segue because dossier is sponsoring today's video but i do legitimately wear their perfumes every day and i was wearing this one on a date the other night and i got a compliment on it so maybe i should wear this one more often the um orange blossom one i'm a fan Dossier is a affordable perfume company that basically makes dupes for designer and luxury perfumes. So they're inspired by scents that are like $100, $200, crazy things like that, but all of their perfumes are about $30 or $40. And I kid you not, I should show you my bathroom one of these days in my little setup. I have like, I don't even know how many of their perfumes, a lot. And I like every single scent that I have. Highly, highly recommend. I love how much the company cares about sustainability using recycled materials. They donate all of their returns to charity and they're risk-free because if you don't end up loving the perfume, you can return it. I'll have them linked down below if you wanna check them out. I've worked with them for honestly, probably the past year now, maybe longer than that. And they're a company that I just genuinely really love. So check them out, link down below. Without further ado, we're gonna get ready. I feel like I should start by telling you how my morning's gone. It's nine o'clock, moving a little bit slow today. But I've also been kind of sick the past week, so I've just been taking it slow and letting my body do whatever it needs to do, which lately has been like going to bed at eight o'clock and waking up at eight o'clock. I've just been so tired. But this morning, I was woken up. I think it was, it must have been around like six or seven because when I got up, I saw the sunrise and I was like, ah. I was woken up by voices in my apartment and I'm like, what the heck? So I just kind of lay there for a minute thinking, oh, maybe I'm hearing my neighbor. Maybe I'm imagining things and I'm still half asleep. No, there were voices coming from the apartment. So I get up and I walk into the living space and my TV is on. I was like, I definitely did not leave that on. What is going on? My cat is sitting on the couch back there with the remote next to him. He must have stepped on it and turned on the TV, but then he's just like laying there with the remote next to him looking like he purposefully turned it on so he could watch TV. And like the thing is if you accidentally hit the on button for the TV, it takes you to like the home screen with all of the apps. It doesn't start a program. He had started something. I don't know, I didn't actually like look at it to see what it was when it was playing. So he must have hit like several buttons. <laughs> It was so weird. So yeah, today's a Friday. It's gonna be a pretty chill kind of day. I have a couple of editing clients right now. I'm working on a copy edit as well as a manuscript evaluation. And then I also have a coaching call tomorrow. So I just have some like prep. I actually don't really have any prep left to do for that. I'm pretty prepared, but I wanna go through all of the notes that I've made so far. Basically, this is like a backlist I'm like leaning over here because I have a mirror over here. Um, evaluation where my client has a ton of books out already but hasn't been seeing the kind of sales that she wants to see. So I've like gone through all of her backlist and her social media and her website and her goals. I sent her a questionnaire and stuff and I've come up with a plan on moving forward how we can start to move these books to get the results that she wants to see. And I'm actually really excited about having this call with her tomorrow because I have a lot of ideas and I'm just like so freaking confident that we could start to sell these books. So uh, I'm actually pretty excited about it. So then tomorrow, Saturday, I'm also excited because I've joined this um, kind of like book club. So we're going out for dinner and drinks tomorrow. Oh, that's not where I wanted that line, that's okay. And then we're gonna go roller skating. So I'm looking forward to that. Anything else to update you on? I'm still editing my book, Bloodless Ties. We're still working on it. I actually am hoping to get some work done on that today as well. And then at some point today, I'm gonna try and get some kind of workout in. It might just be something like super easy, like a walk or something, 
because apparently I overdid it yesterday and I am so sore I can like barely walk. <laughs> I've always been like a very goals oriented person and like skills oriented person like when I see a skill or something that I want to be able to do I become like fixated on it and I need to be able to do it like that motivates me a lot more than like I want to lift a little more weight you know for a while there I was really into lifting but I've just like found skills are so much more motivating for me I think it comes from like I was a gymnast for a while I was a dancer so like having those goals like it's so satisfying once you finally be able are able to do something that's hard you know so anyway, I don't know if you've ever heard of a dragon squat, but that's my latest thing that like I need to be able to do. It's like a pistol squat, so you're squatting with one leg, but then one leg like goes behind the other. It's like so cool looking and I want to be able to do it, but it's really hard. So I've been like trying to get myself to be able to do that. Long story short, now my legs are so sore. <laughs> also, because I kind of missed doing my daily walks and stuff. I've just been doing walks where I just walk around the city around me and I turn randomly whenever I see something that kind of interests me. So that way I'm getting my walk in, but I'm also getting like acquainted with the stores and stuff around me. And I found this really cute plant store near me. And I have a couple of plants, but I definitely want to get some more because originally we were going to bring all of my old plants from my old place with us. And somehow, just like in the shuffle of moving, we forgot to pack them in the car. So they are all at my parents' house and my mom's taking good care of them. But now I don't think I'm ever going to get those plants back and I miss them. So I'm going to need to get some new ones out here. I also don't think I've gotten any more furniture since the last video update. So I'm still on the hunt for some kind of like outdoor furniture to put on my um, balcony out here. But the problem is I keep like going back and forth on what I want out there. Because mainly, when I sit out there, I want to be able to work out there. I want to be able to sit and have my coffee out there. I want to be able to read out there. So I want something comfortable, right? Something I can like lounge in and sit in and read for an hour. I'm also on a high floor and it's pretty windy, so I don't want anything like super lightweight that's gonna like, you know, blow around. But then there's this building like across from me and I can see onto their balcony, so I can kind of like looking at all of their furniture for ideas. And this one person over there has like a hammock that looks really nice. I'm like, maybe I want a hammock. I don't know. I don't know what I want out there. So I haven't, I've like been looking around and I've seen a ton of stuff, but I haven't pulled the trigger on anything because I still can't decide exactly what I want. And then there's this other person that has one of those like egg chairs out there, you know, with like the cushion in it. That looks really comfortable. I don't know, man, maybe I should get like an actual like set and have like a table and then I can like eat out there. I don't know. I don't know. I've been having trouble focusing in the apartment lately to be honest. I haven't been as productive as I would like to be so I'm thinking maybe we need to get out of here to get work done today. There's a crepe place near me that I like that has good coffee too. So maybe we'll just like pack up my laptop and we'll go have coffee there this morning and try and get some work done. Or I could just go up to the roof. We've got um rooftop stuff in my apartment oh yeah i now i remember something else i wanted to talk to you about I was telling you about my coaching call tomorrow and stuff and doing this whole prep work for this specific coaching call um i've done a couple in the past but i do like all different kinds of stuff like i've had one in the past where they hadn't even written the book yet and they were kind of stuck in the brainstorming stage so we just got on a call and went over and help, I helped her brainstorm basically and asked her a ton of questions about the book that she wanted to write. But then I've also gotten onto calls with people who I had just done a manuscript evaluation for. So I just read their book and I could like talk them through the notes that I made them and help them brainstorm where they're gonna go from there. So basically this service is like all over the place and I never really know <laughs> what to expect in my inbox when it comes to this kind of stuff, which I think is part of what makes it so fun. But specifically what I'm realizing with this client with the backlist thing is I'm really enjoying doing this and I feel like I could be a good help in this kind of case like I feel like I have a lot of ideas and I, like I said I am like actually confident that we can start to sell these books like I feel like I could be good at this and I enjoy doing it but I'm realizing with all of the prep work and stuff that I'm doing before this call like I totally undercharged um which is okay, 
but like looking forward it's kind of got me in this weird um dilemma where i'm kind of caught between like the business mindset of like how much time i'm spending on something versus how much money i'm getting for it and whether or not i need to be using my time on something else because i have a million other things i need to be doing but then also this sort of like moral qualm i don't really know how to explain it of like a lot of people who come to me with this kind of stuff they're coming to me because their books aren't making any money right like they need help they're it's hard enough to make money as a self-published author to begin with i know that all too well as an author myself and so like i don't want to charge these people a lot of money i know they're not making money from their books um they're coming to me for help with that and so charging them a lot of money like it wouldn't feel good to me like i don't want to do that um so then i'm in this weird predicament of like i enjoy doing this and i think i'm good at it but i don't know if i can afford to keep doing it at the rates that i am charging because of how much time it's ending up taking me and how much effort i'm ending up putting into these things but i don't know if i'm willing to charge people more than i am because i just would feel guilty doing it to be honest so this is a weird little bump in the road that i have come to because this is a relatively new service for me so i am kind of figuring it out as i go ah it's just been an interesting realization that i've had so anyway i think that's all we're gonna do today i figure out what i'm gonna do with my hair oh, i didn't even do this hold on please hold we don't need to be shiny all day good enough I'm gonna tell you my hair feels amazing like it feels really healthy i put a treatment in it last night and then i slept with it in braids so it doesn't look good it's all like poofy and weirdly whatever but it feels nice so i don't want to do anything to it because it feels healthy i've seen a lot of change been through a lot of pain some things are not the same as they were a year ago but all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time You know what I find particularly insufferable? I've noticed this a lot, I guess on like TikTok and Reels and stuff when I have a video do well um, and I think part of what bothers me so much is I know I used to do this like I know I used to be this person and anyone who had to deal with that when I was younger I apologize because it's so irritating for example I had a video do while talking about my marionette series where I was comparing it to other popular books and stuff like that that I think have a similar vibe basically if you like this then you'll like my book which I do a lot on TikTok because it sells the books really well so I was like did you read I can't even remember what examples I used. Probably like Twilight and like Vampire Academy or watched True Blood and the Vampire Diaries because if you've read the book series for True Blood or the Vampire Diaries, the books and the show are very, very different. So I tend to use the show True Blood and the show The Vampire Diaries when I'm talking about my books because the shows are more comparable to my books than the books are. And so many people, so many people on these kinds of videos always like to comment like, actually, I read True Blood, I read The Vampire Diaries, and it's not just like, oh yeah, I actually read those. It's always with this like tone of um, superiority of like their books, not just to show, which like as a book person, yeah, usually the books are better than the show or the movie or whatever, but for whatever reason, I just find it so irritating when people like feel the need to be like, actually, <laughs> like okay you want like a cookie like cool like these are very popular book series i guarantee you are not the only person who has also read the book series which by the way i have read both of those as well it's not i don't think it used to be a big thing i'm sorry you're not like super special for having read the books these books have sold millions of copies i guarantee you're not the only one who's read it oh I'm sorry, I'm like at my wit's end with the internet these days. I think we're gonna start with my copy editing client, which I'm really enjoying. Speaking of books and things that are similar to my series, The Marionettes, I always kind of compare them to like the trashy young adult paranormal 
romance era you know the like hush hush and fallen and you know that whole like age of young adult and this book that i'm editing for a client has those vibes so much and it's just fun it's fun for me i know i was saying i want to go somewhere else to get work done and i do i still do the problem is i don't want to have to change out of my sweats but it's not raining it's actually like decently nice we should get changed we should go somewhere <laughs> o'clock now. I got rained on my walk home, which was fabulous. I love walking in the rain. Stopped and got my mail. This is um, the company sent me this. We're going to be doing a video on my second channel about it, so I won't bore you over here. But I am interested to try this. I have no idea how I'm going to feel about it. So it's like a laser hair removal kind of deal. I feel like I should actually read this on how to use it before we try it. That will be on the vlog channel if you care that's some good work done we were there for like what an hour and a half two hours it's a crepe place although i do like the crepes there i usually just go there to get a coffee and their breakfast potatoes so that's what we had and it was great yeah i still want to get at least a little more work done today but honestly i keep trying to like get out and do things but i'm so dizzy which like if I was feeling bad in any other capacity, I feel like I could push through, but like I literally can't even like walk a straight line. I'm so freaking dizzy right now, which is so irritating. It's cause I ran out of one of my medications and I haven't been taking it for a few days and it's made me like really disoriented. We're doing the best we can. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a break, then we'll get back to work. It's 1.45. We have officially switched gears. I've been sitting here on the couch working and I think I'm in a good place with all of my client stuff for the day, at least from what I can like think of. So if something else occurs to me, we might jump back to that. But I think for now, I'm going to switch gears and work on my books. So we're going back to Bloodless Ties. I've got Lost on the TV. <laughs> and I've been working on this book for so long. And I think why editing it has been such a challenge to me, mainly in this sense that I've been putting it off. It's because I was feeling overwhelmed, like there's just so much to do. It's why I hate this part of the process. The first revision after a rough draft always stresses me out. So the book is split into three parts. I think I've said that like a million times on this channel. And so the one thing I've like told myself recently that's actually really helped and let me start making some progress again in it is I've just told myself, you only have to fix part one. We're gonna focus on part one right now even though my beta reader is still going through the draft and she's way past part one and i'm still getting her feedback i'll get to that when i get to that right now we're not making any changes we're not even thinking about anything that doesn't happen in part one and for whatever reason that's just like giving me permission to stop worrying about it and has actually gotten me to start making progress in it again that's what we're working on and i have like all of these things i want to change ranging from like big to small things and i've made a list of them and my goal is just to tackle at least one thing on that list every day and sometimes it's as simple as like fixing a paragraph um in one scene is all it ends up taking to fix the problem and sometimes i don't really know how much work something's going to be to fix until i get in there and i start working on it but that's been what's really been helping me the past week or two is I tell myself, pick one thing on the list. That's what we're gonna fix today. And it just made it so much more manageable. Um, it just gives me something to focus on. It really helps me. I feel like this is something I'm working on in my life period. It's just like being more present and being more grounded and just being in the present moment and not worrying about things from the past or worrying about things that haven't happened yet. And that's really helped me with this book actually. It's just picking one thing and focusing on it and we're not thinking about anything else. It's just this one thing on the to-do list and we're staying present and we're staying grounded and we're focusing on that. So we're gonna pick something on the list and get to work on that and yeah. I don't know when the last time I talked to you guys about what I've been reading is, if I can find it. I only mention it because it's related to what we were just talking about. I've been reading The Practice of Groundedness, which I've been really liking. I'm like, I don't know, a little over halfway through. Would recommend. Uh -huh. 